Hello, my name is Sean Heaton. And my name's Emily. Welcome to Harvest Time. Okay, Emily's gonna go ahead and start our fire for us today. And while she's doing that, um, <clears throat> there's a couple of ways that you can cook for the Dutch oven, either briquettes or wood. Once this fire burns down and turns into charcoal, you can do much the same thing. But uh, to use the briquettes, you just simply take as such and, and, and dump them in this briquette holder. Once this burns down, you can set this implement right on top of the, the fire and it'll start the briquettes because there's a, there's a holding uh, tray inside. But for today, and we bring this, uh, hold this. Today, we will use this modern propane cooker here. Okay, coming like this. And chill like that. There we go. And in about a, a couple of minutes, that should be all ready to go. Now, this is the prep work. We like to do the prep work first because this will take a little bit of time to get ready. Now, we're going to put the bread actually into the Dutch oven. This is a cast iron lid, and uh, they do have another Dutch oven that's made out of aluminum. Uh, we find that cast iron is much better to cook with. Okay. Aluminum is nice if you're backpacking or in a situation where you want to travel light and you just don't want to carry a lot of weight. But the cast iron distributes the, the heat much more evenly than an aluminum Dutch oven. Okay, now the purest Dutch ovens would want to not put any tin foil inside. Now, I'm, I might not be a purist Dutch oven. For me, I love the easy cleanup, don't we, Emily? So, we use a, uh, just simply aluminum tin foil, and Emily will go ahead and place that inside the Dutch oven. And we, we like to put the shiny side up because it, it reflects the heat a little bit better. So we'll put that inside as such, and bend down the sides. Okay. And you can imagine when we get done how easy it is just to remove the tin foil and throw it away and voila, you still have a clean Dutch oven. And I'm all about simplicity. Now, uh, before we put the bread in, we will need to put some kind of shortening inside the Dutch oven so that uh, the bread will not stick. Okay. Now you can use almost any bread recipe with to, to make this work. Okay, let's cut her up. Put that in there like this. Yes. Okay. If you can, keep the rounded part on the top and it just makes it look better for aesthetics on the top. Set, you want to put them fairly close together so as they rise, they will push in together and you'll get a much more even uh, cook. Does that make sense? It'll look a lot better. Okay, this is what this will look like before it rises. And after it rises, it will look like... This now, uh, it, it might want you might want to let it rise for about an hour or two, and you can see how it's got a uniform look to it. These briquettes are coming along pretty good. They've they've got hot, they're ready to go. But we're going to go ahead and use the ones that we've already poured out. <clears throat> now in baking, there's a rule of thumb that I like to use when I, I bake with briquettes. You want to put about one third of your briquettes on the bottom and two thirds of your briquettes on top. In this case, we'll put about eight to 10 briquettes on the bottom and about uh, 16 to 18 briquettes right on the top. And so let's move these over here, such like this. Emily, do you want to count those for me? Two, 
about 17 or 15. Yeah. Now these are kind of, that's okay, we, we got too many on the bottom. You want to kind of spread them evenly so they'll disperse the heat evenly on the bottom. And then you simply put the, the, the Dutch oven on top like that. Now, let's put a whole bunch on top. In fact, we're going to make this easy. We're going to grab these right over here. And we're going to dump these right on top as so. Emily, do you want to count those? Turn this off. Spread those out. Now our goal here is to get the inside temperature around 325, uh, 350 degrees. So it should be about 20. 20 will be okay. We got too many? Yeah, about okay. maybe six okay. or a few. Well, what we'll do is we'll let those cook for a little time and then uh, when you think you're about halfway through, then we'll actually shift it 180 degrees like that and it'll cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. It won't take long if, if you got everything, uh, all the variables in place. Now sometimes if, uh, if it's really, really cold outside, I've cooked in zero degrees weather. Obviously it's going to take a little bit longer. If it's really hot outside, um, it's going to not take as long. Now one of the beauties of a Dutch oven is if you, it doesn't hurt to check it on a periodic basis. Now this brings in the, the use of some of the tools that we use. This is what we call a Dutch oven lid lifter. It's a little handy invention. You can do many things with it. When you're ready to move your Dutch oven to another location, you can just haul it around like that. The other thing it does is um, it's got a little handle on here that you can actually grab the lid when you're ready to check your Dutch oven. So you just pull that off just like that. Uh, one of our favorite things to do is, and our fire is burning down well, is she's gonna show you how we like to cook biscuits on a stick. Okay. Well first you grab as much as dough as you want. You start rolling it up like a snake. Make sure you don't don't get bitten though. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then you just wrap it around and finish wrapping it. Then you put it over the fire like a marshmallow like and one of the fun things is when all your family's together and they're cooking like this, and you get a chance to, to talk about what great cooks you are. Okay, we're gonna let that cook for just a minute. Emily, keep an eye on that, because you'll, you'll wanna twist that, just like cooking a marshmallow. It's not unlike that process. Wow, hun, how's that bread on a stick coming? Pretty good, Should we actually. try some? Oh, we can't wait to try that. Okay, let's peel that. You know what they say, you can never trust a skinny chef. Ooh, there you go, sweetie. You said you were hung hungry earlier? Yeah. Eat it up. Mmm, wow. For biscuits on a stick, that's not bad. Mm -mm. Should we check out our rolls? Okay, here we go. Now, the moment of truth in any good Dutch ovener is how good your rolls turn out. Oh my goodness, look at that, Em. What do you think of that, huh? That looks delicious. Doesn't that look great? One of the great tools is a, is a Dutch oven glove. Look at that. Let's pull those up. Let me clear of a spot for me, sweetie. Oh boy, that's another reason I like to use tin foil is how easy it is to get your rolls out. We'll just set that up like that, clear a spot so the audience can get a clear view of how beautiful those turned out. And we're going to try these. Who needs an oven when you can cook in a Dutch oven, right? Okay. Break those open like this. Oh boy, these turned out great, oh. sweetie. A little butter. Pour a little bit of honey on there. Ooh, this is, the best honey is the raw honey from a local beekeeper. Thank you. Now, for yours truly, the one fun thing about dove jovening is 
find a friend to share it with. It's a lot more fun than eating all the goods yourself, isn't it? Put some honey on there. And you can tell that my dog is just dying to get what's left over. Here we go. Mm. Nothing better than biscuits made in a cast iron Dutch oven. You've been a great assistant. Thanks, sweetie. Thanks, Dad.